Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. The sweet sound of Tuesday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, look at that. That is oh, good yeah. stuff. Yeah. Cannot wait to talk about this one. This is. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Maybe I should pour it out, too. <laughs> How's it going, everyone? Welcome to another Tuesday night. This is the weekly baseball brew crew podcast. We are a little bit country. We are a little bit lock and lull, keeping baseball history alive, one craft beer at a time. Wherever you are watching us live today, please give us a like and a follow. And if you love beer with your baseball, please tell a friend, hold them down, make them subscribe. We we need all the followers we can do. We're, we're, we're this is Giving Tuesday, right? So let's 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 give some likes and follows. Uh, we would totally appreciate it. It will help us grow. Um, thank you again for being here, Kevin. You yes, are on. Sir. I what? I <laughs> I'm like what? I'm like, oh, I'm fine. Next thing you know, I'm like, oh shoot, it, we're already at 28. Time to get on, brother. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, Angelo and I were troubleshooting sound uh, up until ten seconds before we started. I, I literally was like reading the chat in our in our in, a, in the studio. I'm like, oh no, what am I missing? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's do it. We have done this 135 weeks straight. You are wow. a part of our awesome journey. So thank you for being here tonight. Here is the lineup card for today. In the leadoff spot is our returning VP of Content Development. It is Angela Trinidad. How you doing, man? Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, Baseball Brew Crew Brew Universe. Thank you guys for tuning in to episode 135. Can't believe we've done this 136 weeks straight. Special shout out to uh, Ian at If Sports Card. He's out in the chat for uh, pinch hitting for me last week. Appreciate it. I had a great time uh, for my son's birthday last Tuesday, but I'm back and I'm ready to go. Right on, right on. Adam, thank you for joining. Uh, hello, hello. David, thank you for joining. Um, yeah, we have a, a, a fun show tonight. Uh, next, he's the field correspondent and senior research analyst for the Baseball Brew Crew. It is Kevin Lyon. Great to be here. It is Giving Tuesday, so if you have a YouTube account, all these people here in the chat, we know our subscribers, but if you know anybody, they always like baseball. If they like beer, great. If they don't like beer, they like baseball. Hey, either one of those topics, great. I literally went to my friends who dad on YouTube saying, just subscribe. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can like and watch a couple things, but just subscribe. That's the main thing. Yeah. yeah. And in honor of Mr. Uh, Cowboy Jack Durango is not here today. I want to say as part of his Jerry Lee Lewis telethon that he wants to do to get us more subscribers, we're going to start a new charity here called Jack's Kids. <laughs> I, think oh it, I think they need a lot of help. <laughs> Jack's Kids. I love it. That is awesome. Hey, Greg Hall's here. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> yes, we're so, yeah, Ian did great. And uh, we always enjoy having him on. And um, yes. Hey, hey. I already asked him if he could fill in for me next week. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We'll get to, later. We'll get to that. Yeah, yeah we, we, we'll have more on that uh, definitely later. Um, unfortunately, Cowboy Jack Durango is uh, under the weather. Um, and under uh, the weather, it's always 110 in Arizona, isn't it? <laughs> that it is that it is and I, and and uh i'm actually i thought i had a little something for him but i think it's um i think i put it somewhere else but uh, i'll actually go into it later but uh feeling under the weather uh get, get well cowboy jack uh way we always appreciate when you're here um i'm michael mondragon your humble host for the festivities and guys we have a great show tonight i know because um i i, I put it together <laughs> wow Yes. Wow. Humble brag. Humble, humble brag. brag. Ask, is that the whole thing? Hashtag humble brag? Yes. Yes, exactly. Uh, I thought there were some uh, baseball brew crew elves working behind the scenes. <laughs> I, wish there, I certainly <laughs> wish there was. Uh, we, either, we need some uh, some BBC uh, elves or, or interns or something. We, we definitely need <laughs> something going on. Wow. It's a, it's a, oh, it's a 63 degrees right now in and, the desert. And it's actually 58 where I am here in Anaheim, California. So there yeah. you go. Yeah, it, it was it was super uh, cold uh, when I was out there yesterday. All right, so let's get to it. What are we drinking tonight? As tradition has it, we always bring a unique 
uh, and new craft beer to review and enjoy. So guys, what are you drinking tonight? Uh, Angela, I'm going to start off with you. All right. So tonight I'm trying out for the very first time from Made West Brewing Company based out of Ventura, California, the Hazy IPA. This one is 7% ABV, 35 IBU. So right exactly in my wheelhouse. This is made uh, with Mosaic, Simcoe, and Eureka hops. Has a ripe, juicy character with notes of fresh peaches and mango. And fun fact, this uh, was a bronze medalist winner at the California State Fair in 2019. Oh, wow. All right. Wow. that's uh, And I, I see them uh, quite frequently here. Um, and... The, the, the thing that uh, that threw me off was um, I asked you earlier today, I was like, um, like, which I which uh, hazy IPA is it? Because they actually have some cans <laughs> that are, are super elaborate and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, this would be awesome if you, if you got this one or oh, my God, like this one. And, and what I found out was, <laughs> yeah, their cans that for their like yeah. uh, regular beers mm -hmm. are very yeah. plain. Yeah. Like like for the IPA, it's just black. And then the uh, hazy is this, mm -hmm. this color. So mm -hmm. it doesn't really I guess it's stands out by not standing out right yeah and that's actually um one of the things that kind of drew me to this can because you don't necessarily see cans this color um typically when i see a can this color it's usually like a hard seltzer or maybe a hard kombucha or something like that so i was like oh what is this and i saw hazy ipa my favorite so yep. figured it'd be a good fit yeah, Made West. Uh, they have some. They have some good beers, and uh, they're out of Ventura. Am I Ventura? Yep. Yeah. Ventura. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I I doubt I'm gonna get to Ventura anytime soon. Uh, so I guess this is the only way I'll have it. Um, yeah, you never know. I can probably get out there, but it, it's a trek out there for for all of us. Um, yeah, it's, it's really good. The um, I definitely taste more peach than mango, for sure. Um, I'm not drinking it in a glass, but I was looking at photos on Untapped. Um, and it's very, very hazy. Um, actually, um, depending on like, there's one picture where it's like they're inside the restaurant. It's a more uh, orange, darker orange tint. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's one picture where it looks like they're eating it out on the patio or drinking it out on the patio. And it's like a really light yellow tint. Mm -hmm. So, um, but definitely you can tell the haze in the photos and it's really good. So oh, I definitely sweet. recommend it. Uh, another Trader Joe's find. So yeah. those of you guys yeah. that have Trader Joe's around you, um, particularly here in California, I seek this one out. Right on. Right on. Good choice. All right, Kevin, you're up. All right. So um, this is a brewery that I didn't know even existed in L.A. And I and I think if you ever had anything by homage, Michael. I had no knowledge okay. of this. Uh, well, uh, homage is, have uh, location, I'm sorry. Well, they have location in Pomona. That's the one I was wondering. If you oh, ever okay. Pomona. Okay. And um they just they and it turned out it's been apparently over a year. They have a location in downtown Los Angeles by Chinatown, a block from Highland Park Brewery, which is pretty much your favorite brewery. Which I thought was kind of funny. I'm like, what? What? We mean some block away. Everybody was telling me no that. Like, well, I definitely got to stop by there. And it's a really cool looking place inside. And I think they do a lot of like sports specialty kind of stuff. But I saw this and I was just like, let me just get a good hazy IPA. And this is a really good hazy IPA. It's six point eight percenter. Uh, it's called Nectar and <clears throat> Something I'd never heard before. It says dry hops with peacherine hops. Mm. And literally, I couldn't even find really what peacherine hop is. I'm assuming there's peach flavored and, you know, arene. I'm assuming nectarine or tangerine, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I found a website where they said, oh, we're selling them and they're from New Zealand. And oh, like, wow. oh, we're out. Yeah. So some of these, some of these hops are definitely coming from New Zealand, apparently. I don't know if this is where Omaz got. I'm like, wow, that's really interesting. Oh. I've never heard of this kind of hop before. I don't think you have either, have you? I have not. And uh, Omaz, the, the only thing that I've I've heard of them, I see, I, I know about the clothing company. Angelo did a, a video right. of an unboxing, yep. right? Um, yes, sir. I did do an unboxing of Omaz, and I sent our good friend Ian an Omaz t-shirt. Yep. There you go. Yeah, so they, they that's where my uh, Chris Sabo shirt is, I believe. And yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and the, that's the only thing I know. I'm like, oh, this is a that's awesome. Another brewery, another brewery you have to go to. So, and, uh, and you you should definitely check this one out, especially if you, you know if you're in the downtown area. It's about a little about 10 15 minute walk from Union Station if you're taking the train to LA. And like I said, it's literally a block from Island Park, which is great right there. And there's a plenty of good places you can eat at in the Chinatown area, also on your way up there or on your way back. Oh, right. It's, it's, and, it's a very underrated area. It's, it's not an area that like you would drive to. Uh, but if you take the train, I mean, like we have, that's, that's our hack. Oh, yeah. to go to, uh, Dodger Stadium. Definitely. 
Great area. Try to do that one again. Yeah, definitely. If you can check this one out, like you, here's a good sign how much I like their beer. I tried a saison of theirs that was really good. It was called Clan Apple Saison, and oh. that's not my style of beer at all, but. It's one of the better seasons I've had, and obviously cranberry and apple flavor. Oh, fantastic! Really good yeah, stuff there. Great find. Well done. So, Cowboy Jack Durango is um, he's he's a little out <laughs> of the weather. Um, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, in his place, uh, Kevin, can you? I, I, I'll, I'll I'll throw it to Angelo. Uh, do you have any idea what this is from? <laughs> Did I don't know. I'm assuming somebody hit him with the cane, maybe. No. No, this is this is even it's even better. <laughs> I was hoping it's like Fuji Vice or something, you know, or something Ooh, like Fuji that. I don't know if that's yeah. part of Fuji Vice or not. Okay, so in uh, 1986, uh, uh, King Kong Bundy wrestled uh, Steve Gatorwolf. That's why I, w- I was hoping that that uh, oh, Jack was here because yes. he, he has a I always loves Steve Gatorwolf. It, so you were at that show, right? I was not. It was not. Oh, I actually were. missed it was that one, and it, and it was a Saturday night's main event. Right. Uh, taping and uh it was bundy versus gator oh, wolf and then yes. like he squashed him or whatever yes. and then he says i want hogan yes. well later on in the show it was magnificent morocco versus hulk hogan mm-hmm. and um they said like oh mr fuji's sick um i think he came down with the asian flu um, <laughs> Oh, oh no, uh, Jesse! Oh this, no, Jesse! Uh, I think uh, he came down with the Asian flu, <laughs> McMahon. Oh, and uh, so, like, guys get canceled for laughing at that. But but, it, but that's the whole thing. It's it's, it's so it, it was it was definitely a great moment in uh in broadcast history. But it would totally get canceled today. But anyway, I love the ice pack on top of the derby. It's, yes, that's, yeah, that's yeah, for sure. <laughs> and the hot water bottle on the midsection. You know, oh, that's, that's good stuff. Oh, because that's when Bundy attacked. Um, yes, and setting up, uh, yeah. setting up WrestleMania too. Yes, sir. Yes. That's so, good uh, stuff, pal. Good yeah. Stuff. So I, I had to throw this in here because whenever he was under the weather, I, I always think about this for some dumb reason. Um, but my so, beer for tonight um, uh, ooh, is the West yeah. Coast Way IPA. It's a collaboration between Beechwood Brewing and Firestone Walker Brewing Company. Yeah. It was actually released on November 17th. So this is super wow. fresh, wow. Um, massively bright and aromatic, hopped with uh, mosaic cryo, citra, Simcoe, and Columbus hops. Uh, Columbus is, is one that's kind of new to me. And uh, oh my gosh, this is, I think also because it's so fresh, um, it's, it's, super juicy and, and awesome but beachwood like they, they can't they're they're winners in my book i i love like almost oh, yeah. everything that they do and then you know firestone walker i thought this was a very interesting collaboration i i wouldn't expect <clears throat> actually so and then i i love the picture so it's super cool too yeah yeah if i remember right too uh michael to look out for in december if i if i remember right i saw beachwood making a beer of green cheek so there you go. That Ooh, might be what we have to have wow. on the show before the end of the year. Oh that my gosh. Sensory overload. Oh yeah, I know. Oh my goodness. Wow. That's a that's a great collaboration. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um yeah, so uh great beers. Cheers to all of our um selections tonight. Thank you for joining us. And uh let's get into it. This is this day in baseball history for November 29th. Yes. It's the end of November, and we have plenty of baseball to talk about. What? (laughs) Well, quite frankly, there wasn't a lot of baseball news, but somehow in – in my research, uh, I went I went down some rabbit holes, and I, I think you're gonna enjoy. That's why you hashtag do the research. That's what, exactly. That's what, you know. You can sit back while we do the research, and uh, now now tell you about all of our baseball nerdiness and pop culture, uh, as you'll as you'll see. Well, I mean, come on. We already talked about a Saturday Night's main event from 1986. I mean, come on, that's <laughs> yes. pretty. Uh, yes. That's pretty, big, yes. pretty deep there. And already we made a Steve Gatorwolf reference, Yo. which nobody will do. You well, nobody wants to do. Don't Google him. Do. Don't Google yeah. after that guy. <laughs> yeah, bad, you know, bad you know, choice. No, brother. There bad is a podcast choice. about him, though. Sports and crime, I think it's called. Oh, for crime and sports. Oh my it. gosh. Yeah, we'll we'll leave, we'll leave, we'll leave it to them. <laughs> yep. 
November 29th, 1966, the Yankees trade veteran third baseman Cleet Boyer to the Braves for outfielder Bill Robinson and another player we will name in just a minute. So uh, Bill Robinson actually went on. Uh, he was with the uh, Pirates. I remember having his cards uh, in the late 70s. No, I still um, Boyer on the left had like they had a whole slew of family baseball players it was like i think three major leaguers yeah. i think they had like other brothers who were in the minor leagues as well yeah you know, like Clay, uh, Clay, <clears throat> ken boyer uh with yes. the cardinals yes. um um no, yeah there's another yeah there's ken three who was in the major leagues for sure got it so atlanta's new 29 year old infielder obtained to fill the void created by eddie matthews departure to houston will have a very productive year, hitting a career-high 26 home runs and driving in 96 runs for the seventh-place club. All right, so let's talk about the other player uh, in this deal. Uh, yes, a 40-year-old right-hander named Chi-Chi uh, Olivo. He was from the Dominican Republic, and he only played four years in the major league. So he started at 35. 30. Wow. And, and so um, he, uh, in four years, he had a seven and six record with a 396 ERA. So I'm assuming he played all his years in the Dominican Republic. Finally, you know, they finally took a chance on him and, and they, they got a little bit out of him. Um, so I guess it's garbage time. Not like a garbage time picture. You know, seven and six and a four ERA. You know? Totally, totally. And so I did the research, and he is the only Chi Chi in the major leagues ever. Okay, and and okay. Uh, I was just like, okay, and it's, he's got a card that the true, yeah, true right? Is that his only card? I believe that might be. Although this is the only one I can find, but uh, wow, um, that's his rookie card. If you get that one, you might be able to, you know. Yeah. Get a, get a dollar or two. I don't know how much commons are these days for 66. Now there, there was, um, there was a cha-cha who was cha-cha. He was, it, his nickname was cha-cha. So it wasn't his oh, real name. It was cha-cha. Yeah. He was known as cha-cha. Uh, Any, anybody? Hmm. We've talked about him before and he's one of those players that, that, it sounds familiar, and you probably get them confused with so, with somebody. Um, it's actually Orlando oh, Cepeda. I didn't know he's called, oh, called yeah. Chacha. He was also known as the uh, Baby Bull. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Not to be confused with uh, Leon White, who was uh, the, the Baby Bull, and yes. also uh, Vader. Vader. Yeah, Larry Vader. Vader. Yeah. Um, yeah, Chacha, real smooth. <laughs> um, okay, so... No. <laughs> of course, no. of course. Um, there was no uh Chi Chi and there's a Cha Cha. Yes. But was there can you name another Chi Chi in professional sports? Oh yeah, I, I absolutely can. Oh, you can. I want to see who he has. Chi Chi Rodriguez, baby. There you go. Ooh, yeah. yeah, nicely done. Yeah. Juan Antonio Chichi Rodriguez. I, I was actually going to uh, throw this to Jack and see if he, he had any uh, knowledge on Chichi I, Rodriguez. I, I, I don't want to know what Cowboy Jack would say <laughs> in regards to uh, Chichi in sports. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's my. Was he? He was on WKRP in Cincinnati. It was, was he? I, I I seem to remember that that might that might be the case. Oh, Ricky Rodriguez was on yeah, a guest star. Oh my gosh! I believe. Look at that man! Look at how smooth, you know, look, it's smooth. You talk about real smooth. Look at him. So he's. I mean, talk about smooth, but also like his sing signature was like when he he had a long putt, he would actually do this kind of fencing thing with his yep. his golf club, and then right there, what he's doing on the on the left, right there, he it would, would straight, you know, hold yeah. his finger and then like push it in like a sword uh, yeah. and everything into his into the sheath and it's i mean like it's total so flamboyant total flamboyant so okay so let's go down further down um well you want well great oh, that's right first, that's so right you know. les nesman pronounced he, he i think he called him chai chai rodriguez <laughs> and then 
Uh, Johnny Fever corrected me. I, I think it's Chi Chi. He's like, he kept on going Chai Chai. <laughs> yes. Yeah, like uh, yeah, like Chai Town. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that's Chai right. Town. Not, even though it's Chicago, it's Chai Town. <laughs> right. Okay, so what's the baseball tie in here? For Juan Antonio Chi Chi Rodriguez? Yes, he actually has a baseball tie in, which wow. was actually <clears throat> like. Oh, only three years ago. Three years ago. Yes. Oh I couldn't believe it either when I saw this. I he out, think... Did he throw out a first pitch somewhere? Oh, my. Know. He did not throw out the first pitch. Oh, oh my God. God. It. Yes. Yes. How good is that? Uh, How awesome is that? Now, this, this compares. I remember um, – I saw the Dodgers and, and Red Sox at uh, L.A. Coliseum, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar didn't throw out the first pitch. He sky-hooked it, oh, right? That's awesome. I was Actually, he threw it. He didn't, he, he didn't do well, so he sky-hooked it and, and, and did awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, that, nicely done, Angela. I, I, indeed. So, um, yeah, so he chipped it, and, uh, and uh, <laughs> that's – I mean, yeah, how that's, awesome is this? That's cool. But no swagger to this day. Look at that guy. Um, yeah, and and I guess he has um, it's chichi.org, and he actually has a foundation that um, that he actually it runs events and it gives back to like kids care uh, like youth charities. Well, there you uh, go, Giving Tuesday. After you support us, you it's for Jack's kids as part of the Jerry Lee Lewis Telethon <laughs> by subscribing to our YouTube page. Go chichi.org. There you go. There you go. And. Um, Okay. Make sure, dot, make, make sure it's dot org and not dot com. You know, what <laughs> yes, that's, that's a hundred yeah. percent. Well done. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. So, Kevin, I'm going Kevin, to put oh, you no. on the spot. No. All right. Um, yes, sir. I want you um, to name the 1978 album that featured a mutated uh, Chi Chi Rodriguez caricature. Um, the only thing I could think of is Disco Duck. Oh, <laughs> wow. I don't know. I can't, I, I, I got to think about this, but I don't know. 78 album that had. 78 album. Um, oh, gosh. I'm trying to think of like, what, what? I'm trying to think of anything with like a weird character. Of him. You're gonna, you're oh, gonna... I'm sorry, Devo. Duh. Oh, yeah. Oh, nailed it. Wow. Course, duh. Are we not men? That's right. Duh. Nailed <laughs> it. God, so I got that immediately. So if you look at this, I mean, they, they took the, it was off this uh, little uh, picture right here, right. but they, they mutated it with uh, presidents, John F. Kennedy, Lyndon B. Johnson, Richard Nixon, and Gerald Ford to get around just using it. But that, then they actually reached out to Chi Chi Rodriguez to be um, on this album and it took too long. Oh. So they, they went with this. And this is the way to, it's it's been ever since. But he actually I didn't, I didn't put two two together until I saw the hat right now. I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. I love you have the actual little thing there on that that the, the cobra head cover. Wow, yeah. Was, Kevin has never stumped man. I know. I, <laughs> I yeah, I've been stumped. Don't worry. I, <laughs> well done though. Well done. Yeah. Very good. Wow, that's their, I think that's their first record, I believe. Their first yeah, record. It's absolutely. Very, very a seminal uh, staple uh, for sure. All right. And uh, my, my friend Brian Sauters would not uh, let me go before I made reference to former Phoenix Inferno uh, player and later LA Lasers, Chacha Namdar. So the U.S. played Iran today and beat them one Uh Chacha Namdar uh, was Iranian. So see, it all comes back, right? <laughs> this is a yeah. rabbit hole that you can yeah. only get on the Baseball Brew Crew podcast. Yeah, like, you know, indoor soccer from the 80s. Of course, yeah, you had to get your soccer spot in. I get it. But they have LA lasers. That's great. But, but uh, yeah, just like – Yes. My guys are wearing – he has like the NBA shorts there in that car. And my yeah, God, exactly. that's like NBA shorts. Jeez. And by the way, by the way, the, uh, the Inferno on the left, they're playing the Cleveland Force, who actually got sued by Lucas uh, for using oh the Force. <laughs> Very good. Right. We're, we're good. Again, down the rabbit hole. That's all right. You know what? That's all the fun here. All right. This is a fun one. So uh, we have a couple from 1971. This is November 29th, 1971. The Giants deal Gaylord Perry to the Indians for all-star pitcher wow. Sudden Sam McDowell. 
Um, the former San Francisco right-hander will finish his Hall of Fame career with 314 victories. And Sudden Sam, due to personal reasons, will, will post an 8-17 and 17 record for three different teams before retiring <clears throat> in the 75 uh, season. Now, are you ready for this? This is... This is another factoid, and I wish I wish Jack was here because he could confirm this. And actually, I was I was going to put him on the spot. Okay, so I know for sure that this picture of Gaylord Perry is taken in Phoenix at Phoenix Municipal Stadium. So if you look back there, there's um, yeah, I see there's the, like the, the mountains, and right, and, and mountains, yeah. so there's a fence, and then there's the mountain range. Now, right behind there is the Phoenix Zoo. There's a, oh, there's okay. a road and then it's the Phoenix Zoo. Mm -hmm. So that road is named Van Buren Boulevard. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes sir. If you go a mile north, what is the road named? I'm going to throw it out to you guys. What do you think the road is named? McDowell Avenue. McDowell, you nice. nailed it. There you go. So sudden Sam McDowell, I tied uh, this picture <laughs> into the place that was taken. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, very good. Very and good. Uh, I, I was going to let uh, Jack have that reveal because he, he knows Phoenix like the back of his hand as well. Um, and uh, I know. I, oh, and, and Greg Hall knows too. There you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. <Yep. laughs> yeah. It gets no nerdier than that right yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know, basic geography of your hometown. Good job, sir. Yeah. Well, um, I, it, I was hoping that the road right there, I was, my first thought was like, I think that road is McDowell and it turns out it's Van Buren, but it's right. like a mile North. It's, it's, uh, it's actually, uh, McDowell. So there you go. So, oh my gosh, super nerdy. So I, did you, I want, you know, something I may need to confirm with Jack is I want to know, what are these personal reasons of Sam McDowell? Oh, right? yeah, we have to figure that out. I might have to hashtag do the research, do a hazy history on that one. <laughs> he I want to know why he's it. sudden Sam because, man, it sounds like he was like son of Sam, maybe going on outside yes. of the field. Yes, you know? and it's such a, such a great name, sudden. Yeah. sudden. Um, he suddenly retired. Yes. I guess. I don't know. A lot of sons there. Yes. All right, November 29th, 1971, in a winter meeting now considered one of the worst in baseball history, <laughs> yeah. the Astros trade nine-year veteran. It's amazing that he was he got nine years with, with mm -hmm. Houston. Actually, he started with the Colt 45s. Right. Um, veteran second baseman Joe Morgan, uh, also Ed Amberster, Jack Billingham, Cesar Geronimo, and Dennis Menke to the Reds for Tommy Helms, Lee May and Jimmy Stewart, and uh, wow. not, not not the actor Jimmy. Stewart. Oh, I was gonna say, did, did, was there an angel <laughs> in Houston ringing his bell? You know what I mean? Which, <laughs> and then straight happened. That's Cincinnati gains a regular center wow. fielder and top of the rotation starter because Houston skipper Harry Walker, not known for his tolerance, labeled the 29-year-old future Hall of Fame middle infielder a troublemaker. And, and and then Joe Morgan won, won, won like what two MVPs with the big red machine. Yeah, so Geronimo is a solid player too for them. And the that's right. And, and Billing with Billingham is that what you said? Yeah, I remember he was like a regular starter with them. Yeah, too. yeah. So you have like three parts of the big red machine in this one trade. Wow. Right. Right. Totally. So yeah. <laughs> so you can see why it was one of the worst trades in history. Yeah. November twenty ninth, nineteen seventy six. Can you can you believe this one? After listening uh, to offers from the Expos and Orioles, Baltimore free agent, yes, Baltimore free agent Reggie Jackson agrees to a five-year, $3.5 million deal to play for the Yankees, a team that had argued against signing him. Mm -hmm. During Mr. October's turbulent tenure in the Big Apple, the Bronx Bombers will win four divisions, three pennants and two world series. And later on, uh, Angela, what will, what will he do? Drop bombs on him. That's right. <laughs> Drop bombs on him. I think that's your spot now. That is my spot. <laughs> I couldn't spot. blow my spot. <laughs> yeah. I, so a lot of people forget that he was a, a Baltimore Oriole at For one, one season. Well, one. It, it wasn't even the, it wasn't even the full season, right? It was like, <laughs> I don't, 
I thought he signed with the Mets because he was at the A's when he started, and then uh, seventy five he left. I think I thought he played a full season with him, but don't quote me on that. And if you want to know more about Reggie, when it's time at the Yankees, go to our go to our YouTube. You're on our YouTube page, most likely. Look through our history. If you didn't see our hazy history episode on George Steinbrenner, we definitely touched on the Reggie Jackson there. That's right. Reggie is quite the interesting character. You yes. know, he's the he's the straw that stirs the drink, as he said. <laughs> That's right. That did not go over very well with the rest of the Yankee clubhouse. Yes. Oh, and uh, yes, and he, he's also a, a part-time actor as well. <laughs> yes. I don't know if you can get Reggie there. Let's see. Get Reggie on my jacket. There he there is. There he is, yes. Must kill the queen. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so but I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this out to you guys. Yes, sir. Um, has has Reggie Jackson ever executed a pro wrestling maneuver on Billy Martin? <laughs> I'm gonna, and, and what move? If if so, I'm gonna go I with the fire. I'm gonna go with the fireman's carry takedown. Fireman's carry. That's a great guess. I think it was almost like a like a side headlock takeover or something like. That. I, I I was gonna say hip toss. Oh, hip toss. Oh, hip oh, there toss. you go. Hip or judo toss. toss. Yeah. <laughs> that's really that's really great form on the hip toss. That is. You, yeah. Look at that base. Yeah, Reggie got some good base there. Exactly. Yeah. What a weird. Yes. I need some context of that photo. <laughs> it looks like, you know, it really looks like it's. I think it's in Dodger Stadium. Like it, I think that might have been during the World Series. Well, no wonder Reggie's no wonder they're happy. <laughs> exactly. Reggie's smiling with yeah. being with you know with Billy and Billy obviously is you know a few a few bottles. I shouldn't say bottles because he I think he's a liquor guy, but <laughs> yeah. you know definitely enjoyed his liquor. Well, oh, no, look, he enjoyed more like too. Uh, yeah, Billy's What's even that? got that 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 cell face before he has to tuck the chin on the. On the <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, the expo. Yeah, if, yeah. Speaking um, of his history, I know we want to do a full hour thing on Billy Martin because he is one of the most. He's one of the great, craziest characters in baseball history. Yes. So much. There's so much on him. Yes, and and we also had that Pepto Bismol. Uh, uh, he yeah. was also a Pepto Bismol uh, spokesman. That was great. Yes. <laughs> All right. Oh, no. clo- Speaking of hazy history, this is a crazy history topic that we've done in the past. Oh, oh no. November 29th, 1992, Marge Schott, in a New York Times article, tries to explain her recent insensitive remarks by stating her reference that Adolf Hitler was initially good for Germany uh, was in jest and that she didn't understand why another word for Japanese people uh, was offensive. (laughs) Major League Baseball will appoint a four-person panel to investigate the Reds' owner's comments, eventually suspending her for the inappropriate remarks. Um, Wow! (laughs) (laughs) I think that that she actually was suspended twice, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yeah. So, um, and and there was and no. Eventually, she more or less lost the team. She more or less got the team taken away from her, pretty much. Yeah, she was like uh, uh, Donald Sterling in a sense. Um, when and and when when he was going through all that uh, recently. Well, I say yeah. recently, but yeah, within like recent years, years um, this was brought up a lot. Mm-hmm. And um, so, um. And, and you know, and and looking, I mean, uh, I, I mean, the Sports Illustrated cover. I always remember "Red Menace." That yeah. is the most awesome tagline oh, yeah. ever yep. <laughs> for her. And um, here she is with her dog. Uh, no, for, before we answer, uh, Kevin, do you know the name of the dog? I don't know if I do, darn, because I was getting ready to go on a whole, whole nother subject on this dog. But tell me the dog's name, then I can go on from there. Okay, uh, Angela, any idea what the dog's name is? I mean, Marge Schott's dog. What is the name? Big Red. Oh, that's that's a, that's a fantastic yes. one. Um, but you're thinking uh, to a uh, big picture. Um, of course. Shotzi? Boom. That's right. Nailed wow. It. <laughs> I was like, wait, I remember now. <laughs> I do remember. I do kind of recall that now. Oh my god. And um, yes, uh, yes, that That's is amazing. That is Marge Shot's uh, autograph, and uh, it is a paw. It is not what you think. <laughs> it's not a a vulgar uh, little picture. Uh, how do we know it is Marge? You know. <laughs> yes, Shotzi. Um, 
And so that, could I now? Do you have a photo of her in the ballpark with this dog, or do you want me to tell you about that? Oh, go ahead, go ahead for it. So apparently, at the games, she didn't have a, a luxury box. She would have a seat actually in the stadium, and she'd have you know ushers around or whatever. But she would always be sitting, sm chain smoking the entire time with Shotzi's sitting with her at every Reds game. And apparently, people who would want to get, get autographs, she was pretty friendly with most people who come to get autographs from her. Like that was a crazy thing that when I was doing the research, we did hazy history on this. She was actually quite a, phil a philanthropist. Well, I don't know, philanthropist for in the Cincinnati area, believe it or not. It's kind of crazy because you just think like, you know, I, I'm giving this point, and Jack's just looking at me like, how dare you bring up any good points about her? And I'm like, hey, you know what? She's good for the Cincinnati community. Here's what I'm gonna give you, you know, give the other side. I'm not gonna say yeah. anything about what you have about Hitler, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah, and and uh yeah, she 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 was awful. Like um there's there's another woman who used to own um hotels in New York, uh Leona Helmsley. Oh, and yeah. um and mm -hmm. just just really would treat people so badly. Um and there was um oh yeah, <laughs> and yeah. uh yeah. yeah, that 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 was a real thing. Like the dog, yeah. it, it, the dog was unruly, and and uh, I remember when when Pete Rose uh, broke Ty Cobb's record. Uh, Marchot was nice enough to um, give, uh, I think, give Pete Rose like a car, and then they drove it onto the field. But you, you see her coming <laughs> on, and she's like so impatient, like she's like, yeah. get out here, like she's and, and it, yeah, it's like. That was how she made money. She actually had car dealerships. That's how her. Okay, I think, I think her husband started it. Then she inherited it. And she right. Was, the entrepreneur right. for like in the Cincinnati area for selling cars. Yeah. So she was. Uh, she was a big part of like the Cincinnati. Um, you know, just uh, celebrity. I mean, like yeah. uh, actually, wasn't uh, wasn't Jerry Springer? Uh, it, it, wasn't he the, Cleve, the? I think he was a Cleve. I, I can't remember if he was a mayor of oh, Cleveland, Cleveland or Cincinnati. Or Cincinnati. I don't remember which of the two hashtag to the research. It's one of those two. Oh no, I'm gonna look quick. See if I can uh Jerry Springer mayor. Let's see what comes up. Yeah, I wanna I wanna I I think it was Cincinnati, but uh I could be totally wrong. Um, it's one of those uh yeah, Cincinnati, you're correct. Thank you. Okay, so good. So I, I did, I got that right. Good job. And and uh yeah, so so he, so he was born in London. Jerry Springer is born in London. That's really oh, is that funny. right? I was like, exactly. what do you mean? I'm like, no wonder he couldn't, he can't get any higher than a, you know, he could be a yep. mayor, but he can't be a president. Well, that's, I, I think that's how he lost being um, the, the mayor for, you, you know, how he lost, uh, or I think, it, I think it was the way that he, he lost being a mayor. Um, are, are you aware of the story? <laughs> I think it had something to do with either infidelity or drugs or both. Well, he actually, <laughs> He was with a prostitute and he paid her with a check. <laughs> that is yeah, Jackie story. laugh, please. Jackie laugh, please. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you. that's that's how it so so <laughs> Cincinnati is like yeah. it's crazy. I mean, can you imagine being being there like in the in the I, 70s You know what we needed? We needed like him and Washington DC Mayor and Mary and Barry to hang out. Yeah, oh that would have been quite the pair. Totally. Right there. Yes. Oh my. oh my gosh. Total craziness. Um yeah, so um so Shotzi. So and that's probably more than you needed to know about the, the infamous Marge Shot. Yeah. Now, All if right. you want to know more, go to Beer Baseball on Instagram and go through our history of AZ history. And you can see Jack. If you want to see Jack at near, near his like most angriest state. <laughs> he is not, he he cuts a promo on March shot. Let me tell you. Yes, yes. And uh, Greg Hall says cash money, homie. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. Cash. Absolutely. Um, all right, so let's uh, get to our second oh, segment. It is baseball right. trivia. We're going to test your knowledge of baseball. So um, I want you all in the chat. I want you to answer the questions along with my uh, esteemed panel here. Here is question number one. This Hall of Famer has 135. The reason I use 135 right. yeah, is that yeah, it's the yeah, episode yeah. number. Yeah. As 135 all-time stolen bases, who is he? And here are your choices. Al Kaline, Kirby Puckett, Casey Stengel, <laughs> Turkey Stearns, Phil Rizzuto for the money store, or Rogers Hornsby? 
Uh, this is a great question. So, Mr. Tiger, uh, could be a Mr. Twin, could I would be. say. Um, Casey Stengel was uh, uh, a professor. A professor. The old professor, that's right. Turkey, turkey serves just turkey. Yeah, he doesn't need it. He doesn't need a nickname. Yeah. Yeah, that's his. That's his. That's his birth name, right? I'm sure. I, I'm not sure. It, it might be. I can't look right now. I can't do any research. I might find us a little basis. No research right now. And I feel like everyone watching along with us is as stumped as we are. <laughs> So 135 stolen bases. That's I, I guess that's that's pretty decent. I would say. I mean, these are mostly older players, so you know. Yeah. There's only, the only, I mean, gosh, Al Kaline played in the 50s or so. Roger Ross played in the 1920s. You know what I mean? So. so Ian's going with Turkey Nacho so Stearns. There you go. Greg Hall going with uh, Kirby. Right. Yeah, we talked about him last week. Uh, Angelo, who do you got? Yeah, you know, I'm going to agree with a friend of the show, Ian. Uh, and uh, this guy didn't earn his nickname for no reason. So I'm going to go with Turkey Trot Stearns. Oh, there you go. Hmm. Let me think about this. Because this guy, because I was like, I don't think it's. There's a couple of them I don't think it is. I have no idea how long Casey Stengel even played baseball as a player. You know, you never think of him as a player. So I'm thinking like, you know what? Because I hope it's him because you'll have something on the back end. Let's go to the money store, Phil Rizzuto. <laughs> you know why I'm hoping it's Phil Rizzuto. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I. Um, but oh. it is actually oh. Rogers Hornsby. That was who I was going to go, but I wanted to go for the joke and hope to see Holy Cow. Yeah, that I mean, yeah, I went, every, uh, go ahead. I, I didn't, had no clue, so I went with the joke too. So yeah, and and uh, you know, there's some there's some actually big names on here, and actually all of these, uh, if you could have picked any one of these, and they would all be in the same clump. I was really surprised Casey Stengel actually had uh, that many stolen bases, which was very surprising to me. What well, do you know his number? Um, offhand. Uh, offhand, I, I was, I meant to, like I said, I don't even think of him as a player. I was like, I don't know how good of a baseball player. Right. Was, right. You know? Exactly. So, um, yeah. So Rogers Hornsby and, uh, I later played for the Cardinals and, uh, One here of the best hitters ever. Chicago. I mean, he yes. added 400 a few times in the 1920s. I mean, I would know I was going to Cardinal games all the time back then. You know, there he's wearing the Cubs jersey. So <laughs> yes, you're going to Browns and Cardinals games. So, uh, yes. yeah, you were, you were a big St. Louis fan. <laughs> you know, because there was plenty of uh, I, I will said Bush and Heiser Bush to go around. That's right, exactly. Um, you you knew Anheuser Bush when he was just a twig. <laughs> wow. All right. Uh, <laughs> question number two. Uh, oh, All right. Two Hall of Famers have 135 career home runs. Travis Jackson. Who? I don't. I don't even know. Who I have Travis no idea. Jackson. I have no idea who Travis. Wow. Jackson. I know. Uh, I know Alan Jackson. I, uh, we know a friend of the show, Reggie Jackson. Exactly. Uh, I know Alan. Travis Tritt. Uh, <laughs> um, but no. Um, what about Randy Travis? Do you know Randy Travis? Let's just keep Randy going Travis, this country yep, musical. Exactly. I mean, come on. Jeez. Yes, Travis. How about Jackson. How about Jackson Brown? Oh, Stonewall <laughs> Jackson. There you go. There you go. So. Travis Jackson is one player with 135. Who is the other player? I hope it's the same list. It might be. <laughs> oh, no, we have no BPs. I don't think yes. the same list of players. So your choices here are Zach Wheat, Tony Gwynn, Monty Irvin, Bill Mazeroski, Pee Wee Reese, or Jackie Robinson. Ian already going with Travis Barker, who did not. Oh no, he was going. He's playing along with the Travis Joe. Come on. <laughs> no, he's on. no, he's going along with Travis Barker because he, well, he played during the live ball era. He, he played, yeah. He played during the Green Day era. That's when he played. <laughs> we got out there. Everyone got some guests here. This is a pretty good list too. Good job, Michael. 
Yeah. Most of these players, I mean, like the bottom four all played like the well, Peter, he's in the 40s, but we have a lot of 40s or 60s here in three through six. Yep. We all know Tony Gwynn. I'm Zach Weed, I don't remember. I think he played in the early 1900s. I, yeah. I should know. I was at a <laughs> 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 yeah, not known for being a, a big home run hitter, uh, Pee Wee Reese, but uh, 135 home runs. Yeah, that could be it. Yeah, that could be it. Angelo, who do you got? Uh, I'm gonna go with Bill Mazeroski. Oh, yes, he had one big home run, but it was in, yeah. in the playoffs. Yeah, absolutely, right, yeah. the biggest yeah. home run in baseball, at least World Series history. Yeah. Gosh, this is this is this is a little this is tough because uh, I can't. One thirty-five is the number. Let me, you know what? Let me go with Zach Wheat. Let's go. Zach, let's, yeah, let's go. With, you know, I, yeah. I'm like, there's plenty of jokes I can make, but I'm just gonna say Zach. Wheat. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Greg going with Monty Irvin. I was thinking of that, but I think if they add in, if I think by the Negro League, I figure if they add those stats on, he's have more than one hundred thirty-five. Oh, yeah, interesting. That's what I'm thinking, but. All right. Uh, I think else? I think only Greg and uh, Ian are participating. All right. So we will go with Tony. Oh, Glenn. I didn't win. Ah, oh. Tony Red Glenn. Herring. Red yes. Herring. Yes. Was. One. So I'm like, he had 31. He had like well over 3,000 hits, but I'm like, and I knew it wasn't a big power all my air, but wow. Yep. Yep. That was uh that way it was a surprise to me too. So I was like, I, I love getting into these episode numbers where like yes. you know, like big players like this. I mean, he only when I say only had 135 home runs, I mean obviously wasn't a prolific home run hitter, but still um, you know, there's there's a lot of players that would love to have 135 home yeah. runs. <laughs> yeah. So but also uh, as many hits as he got as well. So there you go. Yeah, so yeah, very, very shocking. <clears throat> so shocking that's, so, what, that's wild stuff that is weird wacky wild stuff wild wacky um i'm actually going to do this um so angelo i want you to dis I, I need you to preview uh what is coming up on saturday for you yes. on rip yeah. and review with angelo trinidad awesome yeah so i'm very excited about this upcoming saturday uh, doing a little something different uh, on Rip and Review this week. So last week, uh, Tops announced on Tops.com uh, the MVP buyback program, where you could take uh, your base card of 2022 Tops Chrome of Paul Goldschmidt and or Aaron Judge, the respective league MVPs, bring them to a participating uh, LCS, and they'll give you store credit for those cards. So I was curious uh, to see uh, how easy and simple the process was. So I visited uh, a local LCS uh, here in Southern California. I vlogged my experience, and I'm going to open up uh, the product that I got with that store credit. So right. uh, tune in this Saturday, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for that premiere. Uh, super excited about um, this content. Um, and hopefully you guys enjoy this as it's a little something different, uh, but uh, kind of like a mini vlog style, but uh, but not. Um, and also get to open some some new product. So uh, yeah. tune in 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time this Saturday. So I'm excited about this one. Did you have one or both of those cards? I only pulled a Paul Goldschmidt and I actually pulled it on the Rip and Review. Oh, uh, awesome. Yeah. 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 So I, I could have sworn I pulled the Aaron Judge, uh, but it was only Goldie. Um, but oh, okay. still... Hey, I, I you'll was take able it. To, yeah, you was, get uh, yeah, twenty uh, back for it. Right on. Good job, Tops. Exactly. So yeah, Tops needs, so some, a, Tops needs to thanks. You know, needs to get some. You know, credibility back after whatever happened with Tops Chrome. <laughs> that got, yeah, that came Tops out. Chrome oh, was yeah. a huge nightmare, and I'm sure yeah. that's what this buyback program is all about. And um, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what they do with these cards. But now, yeah, with, with that twenty dollars, is it just for anything in the store? Mm -hmm. or does that be Tops product? Well, so. Um, I got varied um, response when I like kind of did a little bit of research online. Um, some of the people that have you know talked about their experience online said uh, they could only use it on sealed product. They could oh. use it on some stores or whatever it was. So um, in this, uh, the card shop I went to is called the Card Pavilion in Santa Ana, California. Uh, the owner Nelson was super nice. Let me film in the shop. I was able oh, to talk shop with him a little bit. 
Uh, I put them over uh, immensely in the video, so I don't want to put right. them over too much right now on the live broadcast. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he, uh, but uh, uh, yeah, so but um, I asked them, I said, hey, what can I use a store credit for? He said, anything, anything in the store. So right. um, and uh, he kind of showed me and you'll see in the video, um, he showed me the stack of judges and goldschmidts that he uh, that he's compiled so far from. Oh, wow. Other, so, he actually, other it's, so, so people do know about this. That's good. Right. On. Yep. Yeah. It's good to work wow, out. Fantastic. Great, a great angle. Uh, and it's, uh, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. You just put it on there. So I, I get to edit it. So I haven't even seen it yet. So I'm like, I'm, yeah. I'm excited to see uh, what fun. it's all about. And, uh, yeah, and I definitely, I definitely got to get back to the shop, man. He has a lot of cool stuff in there. I didn't have much time. So I definitely want to take, you know, an hour or so and kind of browse the, uh, boxes and stuff like that to make sure that, um, uh, to just to see if there's anything else I can pick up just for the, for my own personal collection and or stuff to rip on the channel or stuff to get to uh old Kev for the uh, pints and pints and packs. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, I like some old cards. I'm always down for some old cards. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Um, yeah, here's where we are on all the socials, Twitter's as uh, Twitter's. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitch, and TikTok. Uh, Kevin, uh, did you, uh, are you have anything coming up? I mean, I, I'm going to be on vacation coming up. So I don't think I'm going to be opening any cards or doing hazy history this week because I'm leaving Thursday afternoon to go to London, England for a week. So for a pint. I, what? Yes. Yeah. For You're going to head into London, England for a pint. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, I'm just going to fly over, have a pint, and just take the next flight back. And I'll be, no, no. no. I mean, I'm going to be there for a week. I'm sure I'm going to do as much as I can to just uh, document where breweries I come across, any good beers, and just get the good word out there. They may not know about baseball, but they definitely know about beer. So, Kev, yeah, film, a, film a pint and packs on the flight over, please. <laughs> <laughs> that's content. Oh, oh no. I, I, I'll, content. You know, that's not a bad idea. I'd have to record it and like upload it later, but maybe I could do that. Yeah. We're on the flight back, might be funnier. So, yeah, I've never been to Europe and just a friend wanted me to tag along. I'm like, sure, I'll go to London for a week. Why not? So, that's why I was saying earlier, if I've asked Ian if he could possibly fill in for me because. It'll be 2.38 a.m. London time when you guys start. I'd love to come on for part of it so because I, I haven't missed a show since episode three, Michael says. So I want to keep that streak going. I want to yeah. be – you're. I mean, you're Luke, you're Carl, Cal Ripken. I just want to be Luke Curry. <laughs> Minus the disease. Part, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know? uh, I, I, I guess well, – have, have, have fun, kid. That's going to be an awesome trip, man. And the yeah, fun, fun, fact about, fun fact about London is London is um, – host to one of the biggest card shows of the year the london card show but there are little to no card shops in london so okay oh interesting i yeah. wouldn't even have thought about that but so everybody greg, traveled, just, uh, greg all just killed me on that line thank you greg yeah it would not it would not shock me but we're gonna we're gonna give it the old college try um and the last time that i was in uh, England. Oh, um, I was like, well, yeah, you went to England. Uh, yeah, I, 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 oh, I was God. in, I was in Germany the day before, and I wrestled. Uh, well, he's uh, Tommy End, who is now Alistair Black in WWE. Well, no, no, remember he's Malachi Black in AEW, and now in was uh, exactly now he's Malachi yeah. Black in AEW, and um, but I, hey, and, Michael, and, can I yeah. say one more thing for you? You know, he is one half. Uh, last I knew, is one half of a cup. Your tag team champions, the company you used to own, sir. That's right. Yes. Exactly. Half of their tag champions, Pro Wrestling Gorilla. And, <laughs> and then um, in England, I wrestled. Um, he is now Drake Maverick. Uh, back back then, he was Spud. Spud, Spud yeah. Star Spud. Yeah. Star Spud, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was that was fun. Uh, I, I mean, I didn't get to experience much of of London or um we were in Kent so um which is you know on the outskirts but uh, but I I took I did take the uh, the tube and I took that to um Heathrow so go. I got to do that at least at the underground hey I'll be doing yeah. that in, the, in about six, 60 hours so that's awesome I'm, I'm, I'm super jealous super jealous but hey Hey, you'll, you'll have to join us next Tuesday and, and the exciting conclusion if Kevin is actually on, which is going to be so much fun. If I'm awake, <laughs> if that's awake. the main thing. If I'm going to be awake, I might be very drunk. I mean, I'm very drunk anyway. <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course. You're, you're going to, you're probably going to have a few, I'm, I'm sure over there. So, uh, I can't, I can't wait to, to have it documented. Can't wait to see Angela's video. 
Uh, join us next week for more baseball brew crew fun. Uh, we appreciate you hanging out with us for an hour tonight. We will see you next Tuesday. See you later, everyone. Good night.